Take a, just a moment to bring your thoughts, bring your consciousness into this moment. Let go of all of the things that have already happened this morning, things that may be happening later this afternoon, and allow yourself to just be in this moment. Allow your, your heart and your consciousness to open. <coughs> In order that today that you may be changed by something that you hear, that something that you share may be just the thing that someone needed to hear today. We want to hold our dear friend Linda Kittle and her family in our thoughts and send lots of love to she and Steve and Linda's family and the loss of both her brothers in the last eight days. And we send them love. We come back to this now moment. And we are grateful. We're grateful for a safe space where we can come and gather together, talk about things that affect our lives and affect the lives of the people that we love and the people that we have contact with. And so it is, and so it is. And all right. So Okay, so boundaries. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today comes from Brene Brown, who is my, just my absolute favorite. If you're not familiar with Brene Brown, wow, she's got at least seven, maybe eight New York Times best-selling books. I, I have a reader. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, any, any, I recommend you? any of them. No, oh. no, I no. She's a nice person. She is really down to earth. She's very funny. Um, you can catch, she has specials on Hulu, Netflix, um, HBO Max. And so you can, YouTube, you can look her up on YouTube. If you're not familiar with her, she's just absolutely sensational. So she talks a lot about boundaries. And basically what she says is that a boundary is simply what's okay and what's not okay. Seems pretty simple, doesn't it? So, if you think about um, a house that has a fence, 
And that fence is not there necessarily to keep people out, but that fence is there just to show that there's a clear boundary. This is my space. And also that this is my space and you need to request to be able to come into that space. And so that's kind of the way boundaries are. What we're doing is we're setting for ourselves, not just for other people, but for ourselves as well. We set boundaries for ourselves. We're setting that limit. Here's my limit. Here's what's okay and here's what's not okay with me. Um, it's not an easy thing though, is it? Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is tough. And you know who is good at setting boundaries? A two-year-old. I've got a two-year-old granddaughter that I take care of. If I pick her up and she does not want to be picked up, she feels like she weighs about 70 pounds. Because she just flops herself and doesn't want to be picked up. If, if you pick her up and you're holding her and she wants down, she starts to wiggle and kick and she's like, down. <laughs> Two-year-olds are good at setting boundaries. They, they will definitely let you know if you're doing something they don't want you to do or if you're trying to make them do something they don't want to do, they're going to be really clear about that. Until we as parents, caretakers, society in general, start imposing our limits and our ideals of what's okay and what's not okay on them. You know, that it's necessary to some point, but I think, I think a lot of people have, um, have recognized that some of the things that we impose on kids, they're not healthy. What we're doing is we're teaching them that their boundaries are not, are not worth it. They're, they're not important, like um, having, making a kid go up and tell someone. You know, that was something, I know, you know, when I was growing up, that was something that just, people just did. You did, you know, it didn't matter if Uncle George was a pervert, and you knew he was. If, if your parents said, you know, you need to go hug him, and, and that's what we did. We don't necessarily, I think a lot of people, like I said, have gotten away from that, um, and recognized that we need to allow kids to impose their own boundaries, and we need we need to honor those. You know, my my grandson, who's eight, he he does this thing where he's like, touch, don't touch, and you know, it, it's like a game where I'll go like this, and he's like, nope, no touchy. And I'm like, okay, and then he's like, okay, touch, and I'll go and I'll almost touch him, and then he's like, no touchy, and so I back up. But it, it's a game. But what he's doing is he's pushing that boundary. He's trying to see whether or not I'm going to honor the fact that he doesn't want to be touched. And, and so that's, I think that that's really important. So what are, what can happen if we don't set boundaries? What are some of the things that... Oh, here. We get run over. We get run over. Mm -hmm. What else? What are some of the things that happens if you don't, if we don't set boundaries? What are some of the things that that, that happen? We can feel violated. <coughs> Dis ease. Dis ease. Mm, that's good. We very very often feel invaded. Invaded. Or, or violated. Or violated. That was what Sue said right here. Yeah. Feel violated, absolutely. D. You often get taken advantage of because they know you won't say no. Right, right. You get taken advantage of. You know, we people find themselves in dangerous situations. Yeah. Also, burn out, like in a job situation. Burn out. By doing too much. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <coughs> Um, we can find ourselves, like I said, in dangerous situations. We can find ourselves in abusive relationships. 
uh, whether that's uh, an intimate relationship, a, a relationship with a family member, or even a relationship with um, with a job. We, we end up um, where we're doing too much. We're, we overextended ourselves, we're doing way too much, now, and those affect our, our relationships with our family, with our friends. Um, and a lot of times what will happen is that if we're not setting if we're not setting healthy boundaries, then we start blaming ourselves for somebody else's behavior. And it's like, well, it's my fault that the, that, that, that happened because I didn't say no, because I didn't set a boundary. And so that's my fault, which we do need to set boundaries. And what they've done and their actions are their actions, and they're also accountable for those. So, okay, so what are some of the reasons that we don't set boundaries? Fear. Fear. We weren't allowed to as a child, so we didn't learn to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. Didn't learn. That's a good one. What's that? Didn't learn to. Codependency, too. Codependency. <laughs> Sometimes our environment grooms us to not set boundaries. Mm -hmm. Environment grooms. Uh huh. Very good. I do have to say something good came out of my codependency because I finally got into therapy for five years and she sent me to Unity. See? <laughs> That's funny because we've heard that story a lot where somebody's gone to therapy and they sent, they sent them to Unity. Or AA. Or AA. <laughs> <laughs> or Al Anon. Yeah. Wendy. Um, another reason is we're afraid that we won't be loved, or that we won't that we're not a loving person if we say no. Mm -hmm. Loved or not a loving person, right? We're afraid of what people will think of us. Okay, yeah. What else? Yeah, it, it's like when we say we, we want people to like us. What about we're afraid we're going to hurt somebody's feelings? Yeah, I'm saying to you, if I don't do it, nobody will. If I don't do it, nobody will. Yeah. Can you say more about that, Don? Here, Don. <coughs> That's about it. Uh, sometimes you you feel responsible for something because there are no other uh, volunteers. Mm, gotcha. 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 Yeah. Oh, Wendy, can you hand us the Wendy, Don? <laughs> um, also, if we have had. Uh, People who have abused and gone, their, you know, their boundaries. I know that a lot of the choices I've made in my life has been not to be him, not to be like him. So we don't want to identify with the bad guy, and and we do a lot of things not to identify, you know, because that would have been like him. Pretty good taste. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, what about we don't want to disappoint someone? We don't want to disappoint somebody. Um, we said hurt their feelings. Um, it doesn't feel safe to set a boundary with someone. Okay, 
Um, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that boundaries? It's, it's really, it's really uncomfortable. As much as I have set boundaries, let me write this word before I try to talk. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, where am I? Um, having worked in a prison, you know, you you have to set boundaries. I mean, you have to set really strong boundaries, and then you have to enforce them. Uh, and it's still really un it's uncomfortable for me to to set boundaries. So let's let's unpack some of this. So uncomfortable. Uh, Pema Children says that when life presents you a challenge, you step into it, or life throws you into it. Isn't that the truth? If you live in your comfort zone, when challenge comes, then you run from it. You, you numb it. You do something, you, you drink, you take some kind of medication, you pour yourself into TV, you scroll on your phone, whatever it is, some, something, so that you're not feeling uncomfortable, and you don't actually see what it is, it see it for what it is, which is transformation. When we get outside of our comfort zone and we set bound, like set boundaries, the more we set boundaries, the easier it becomes. Our comfort zone expands. So, so, but we have to do it. We have to sit with that that uncomfortableness. You know, I do not like being uncomfortable. You know, here I am. I'm, I've still got my turtleneck on. You know, if it's below 55, I'm cold, and I don't go outside unless I have to. I'm fortunate that my my wife likes to be outside when it's colder, so she gets to take the grandkids out when it's cold, and I don't have to. <laughs> you know, I, could, I don't like to be uncomfortable. People who take cold showers, you know, that thing where people take cold showers, Mm -hmm. I tried it for about three days, and I was like, no, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't like it. Um, so what about um, feeling like it's rude to set a boundary, or, or that it's selfish mm -hmm. to, set, to set a boundary? How many people in here have set a boundary with someone and been told that they are selfish because of it? That's a lot. Yeah, I have definitely been in a relationship and set a boundary and been told that I was selfish for setting that boundary. But you know who benefits when you don't set a boundary? And who is angry when you push against the boundary? Someone who's benefiting from you not setting a boundary. Yeah, yeah me. <laughs> you know? I'm setting the boundary. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, that's who that's who benefits if you don't when you don't set a boundary. Is someone who is benefiting from you not setting a boundary. People don't like it when you set boundaries, do they? No, no. They they start pushing back against the, <coughs> against the boundaries because especially if they're benefiting from it and they're used to being able to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. When you start setting a boundary. It's like, wait, here's this dance. Here's our dance. This is what we're doing. And now you're going, and our dance doesn't work anymore. So they're going to push back against it, which makes it that much more uncomfortable. Don? I think there's something to be said for, for selfishness. Uh, we had no other choice, really. We had, this is the only perspective in which we operate. The self. We have to do that. Because we have no other, no other uh, place to come from, and we have, and if, if we don't look out for that and set the boundaries, we can't operate at all. Right. So one time I was in a church, and uh, a woman in the church said that her sister was homebound and needed some a friend. And Don and I went over to her house to befriend her, go out to take her out to lunch, do something, or everything. Don and I are both pretty good handymen, <laughs> you know, and uh, she had 
this thing that needed repairing. So, you know, we repaired it, and this thing needed that, and this thing. And after a few weeks, we basically were becoming her servants. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I will just go to her, and, and, you know, I said, you know, I deal with codependency, and I said I sometimes don't know how to create a, a, a good relationship, and I really, I'm really not comfortable being your, you know, taking care of everything for you, but I would love to be able to go out to lunch, go do something together, you know, learn to become friends. So the next Sunday, I go to church, and I'm getting all of these looks and everything. And she had gone to her sister and said that we did all these horrible things. It was all over the church that she was this poor, disabled woman and that we had taken advantage of her and hurt her. And uh, we, it was a big mess. So sometimes people really, when you set that boundary, they do not take it nicely. Right. They, they really push back. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm thinking sometimes we're not discussing this yet, but when we when we don't set, if we're considering setting boundaries, it might feel weak if we set boundaries. I should be able to handle this. I should be able to, or. If, Sometimes being a man, you know, hey, you, you, you should be tougher than this. You can put up with this. And I see it sometimes it's weak if I try to set boundaries with somebody when I should be able to handle that stuff. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's, it's almost like um, asking for help. Is, <laughs> is it, you know, for a lot of us, uh, asking for help is really uncomfortable. It, it feels it feels like weakness. I should be able to do it. I should be able, just like you said, Dad, I should be able to do this myself. I should be able to take care of this. And if I have to ask for help, then, then that's weak. And I'm not strong enough to take care of this myself. You know, but... How do we feel when somebody asks us to help them, though? How, how good does that feel to us when someone asks us to help them and we're able to, to lend them a hand? And, but we don't think about that when it's our turn, do we? We don't, we don't think about, about we're giving someone else the opportunity to show up as God was skin for us. That's 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 what we're doing when we ask someone for help is we're we're show, we're allowing someone else to show up for us. So, um, so one of them one of the things that we talked about was that we are afraid to hurt someone's feelings. But setting a <coughs> setting a boundary isn't about their behavior. It's not about you trying to change someone else's behavior. It's it's about saying. I'm not comfortable with this, and so I'm going to do something different. Like, um, like you, you're with your family, and they're sitting around the dinner table, and, and they're talking about politics, and their political views and your political views are very, very different. And you know, right now the climate in the, in the country is so there's there's so much. It's either this way or that way, and and there's nowhere to meet in the middle. Um, so you say, you know, can we change the subject and I, I and talk about something else? And they say, no. Okay, that's fine. And so I'm going to take a walk. <laughs> and you remove yourself from the situation. It's not. It's not about. I need you to do something different in order for me to be okay. I don't. I don't need. I don't want you. Need you to change in order for me to set this boundary. I'm going to set this boundary, and you don't necessarily have to say, you know, here's what's going to happen. You can either change the subject or I'm going to leave. Because then that feels manipulative, doesn't it? 
it feels like, well, I'm going to do this if you don't do that. And which, which is basically what's happening. However, if you don't say it, you just ask and then you go, okay, well, I'm going to go for a walk. That lets them know, you go ahead and continue your conversation, it, and, but I'm going to remove myself from it. We had um, a woman that I was with years ago, the kids had a mom, her, her dad, and I think I told this before, her dad was awful. He was just, he was a mean, angry man. And we would go, we lived in Jefferson City, and we would only come down maybe once a month to, to visit our families. And he called her name, and he was just rude and, and just mean to her. And I said, you don't, you don't have to put up with that. You know, it's, it's, it's not okay. And she said, well, you know, he's just joking. And I said, does it feel like a joke? Do you think it's funny? And she said, no. Then it's not a joke. It, you know, if you don't think it's funny and you, it makes you feel bad, if you want, the next time he does it, we will just get up and leave. And she said, okay. So next time he came down, he started in. And she looked at me and she said, are you ready? And I said, yep. Yeah. And we just got up and we walked out. And we could hear her mom as we were walking out. He's like, oh, come on. You know, I'm just joking. And she's like, no, it's not funny. I'm, we're not staying. And so we started to leave. And we could hear her mom going, you are going to stop that because they are not going to come back and they're not going to see us again if you don't stop it. You are going to stop that and you are not going to talk to her like that anymore. And he didn't. But she said that clear boundary and said, nope, this is not okay. I'm not okay with this and if you're going to talk to me that way, I'm leaving. So, um, what about what about um, disappointing someone? We're afraid we're going to disappoint somebody. That goes back to the people pleasing, doesn't it? Yeah. We're going to talk about that later. I'm just going to leave it with that because we're going to talk about that later. Um, it doesn't feel safe. If it doesn't feel safe to, to set a boundary with somebody, whether it's emotionally or physically, that um, is a huge red flag. If you, if you don't feel safe, setting a boundary with someone where you don't feel you, you know, I've, I've had that happen where I've set a boundary and somebody's turned it around on me and used it to hurt me. Oh. And it doesn't feel safe. And the first time that happened, that should have been this big red flag that said, this is not a good, this is not a good relationship and you need to get away from it. Did I do that? Nope. <laughs> I did not. Um, Oops. But I learned that. I, I learned that in that relationship is to either I'm going to set a boundary and I'm going to uphold that boundary and feel safe about it or I need to get out of this relationship. Whether, like I said, whether it's an intimate relationship, whether it's a relationship with a family member or a friend or a boss, someone you work with, then that should be a good red flag if you don't feel safe. Um, and that's probably something, you know, there are a lot of times where I can unpack something, things like this in therapy. Because sometimes I don't feel safe setting a boundary but it has nothing to do with my wife. Because those of you who know my wife know that if I set a boundary she's going to go, wow, okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. And she's in um, but I don't feel safe because of past trauma. I don't feel safe because this is something that's hurt me in the past. And so that's definitely something I, I recommend that, that you unpack in therapy. Because like Tim and Children said, if you don't get if you get out that side that comfort zone and if you don't get outside that comfort zone and you don't feel that, life's gonna throw you back out of it. Yeah. Just keep throwing you up. Yes, Wendy. One of the things for me in feeling like I could say no to somebody is I had to work on my own um, ability, like you said, to ask, because I would never ask anyone to do anything for me 
unless it was so desperately important. I would have to I would have to be desperate to do that. And if someone set a boundary and said no to me at that time, it was it was just devastating because. And there, and I didn't understand that that wasn't how everybody was. So that if somebody asked you, they wouldn't ask you unless it was so important. And and I had to work on that within myself to learn to ask people to do things when it wasn't important mm -hmm. to to get over that. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. Go ahead, Go ahead. I have to I have to agree with Dawn. I'm extremely selfish. I just know what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. And that's what I live by. I have people who don't like me because of it, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I just like, I'm around a group, and if I'm not comfortable with that group after a while, I can go be around myself, because I've learned how to live with myself. And one of the hardest things I've found to do is to learn how to live with myself. I'm the hardest person that I know to deal with. Does that make sense? <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it is. It's a really good thing to practice setting boundaries with people who are safe, especially if, if it doesn't feel safe to you set, to set boundaries. Um, it's good for me to practice with my wife because I know no matter what, she's going to love me. And she has done enough of her own stuff she would work on enough of her own stuff, not to take it personally, not to get her feelings hurt when I set a boundary. And she is really good at recognizing. Um, you know, one of the things that, that just stopped me in my tracks when I was doing some of this was it talks about, about trusting someone with, with the boundaries and Saying what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it in a mean way. That was one of the things I, I heard in Al Anon. And if you if you trust if you trust then that other me to set boundaries and you respect my boundaries and I trust you to set boundaries and I respect your boundaries, then if somebody says, are you okay? And I say, yes, I'm fine. They can trust that that's true. If somebody says, what's wrong? <coughs> Something's going on, what's wrong? And I say, you know, nothing. They should be able to trust that that's, yeah. that's the truth. I had to just, I had to go, nope. Mm -mm. And just get up and walk away with that. And just sit with that. And it was like, dang. Because I don't do that. Because I'll say, you know, she'll say, is something, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm just tired. <laughs> you know, she's quite on to that one. <laughs> and, you know, just day before yesterday, she said, okay, yeah, you said you're tired. This is not your tired thing. Mm -hmm. What's happening right here is not your type of thing. Something else is going on. So if we, if, if I trust you to set your boundaries and I am going to respect them, and you trust me to set my boundaries and you respect them, when I tell you something, you can believe it. You can trust that that's the truth. That, that right there made me go... And recognize that this is this is one of my big things with not setting boundaries is is my yeses are not yes my nos are not nos and I need to fix that. Yeah, Don. I think it's very important that to once you have set a boundary, it's not good to cross it. Uh, to well, let me give one exception. Because then there's another exception expected, and another exception, and pretty soon you have no boundaries. Mm -hmm. So you must be consistent. Right. Sometimes you don't know what's wrong, 
and you just have to say, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, there's something going on, but I haven't figured it out yet. And sometimes you have to be brave enough to acknowledge that you don't know. You know, I had this, this instance where I actually told my ex-husband a lie because I, I told him what he wanted to hear because I had not figured out where I was and what, what my situation was. And so, and I wasn't confident enough because I knew his judgment that I couldn't say, you know, I don't know, I haven't sorted this out because he would have, I, I knew what his reaction would be. So sometimes, and, and at that point, I wasn't confident enough in myself. So sometimes it's, you have to work on building yourself and knowing who you are. And sometimes you're in that place where things are changing and you don't really know. And so you have to be able to, to give yourself that space and that grace to say, I don't know, when I get it figured out, we'll talk again. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you're in that between place where you just don't know. And, and a lot of that comes from not setting boundaries. How many times, you know, I was in a relationship for 20 years that was, it was a toxic relationship. And when I got out of that relationship, I had no idea who I was. I had put her needs first to, and tried to do everything I could to make sure she was okay. And I stopped doing the things that I wanted to do, that I liked to do, and completely lost myself. And I had no idea who I was because I didn't set any, any boundaries with her. So, yes. So you talked about trusting yourself to set boundaries and then trusting the other person to set their own boundaries as well. And when that comes together as harmony, then you're able, that, that equals growth in a good relationship. Right. And then, she, um, sorry, I don't know her name. Oh, Elvie. Elvie mentioned where she was struggling with somebody who was pushing back mm -hmm. and she kind of lost herself in the ability to set boundaries. So I guess my question is, when you are, when you do come to trust yourself to set boundaries, but you have a force that is pushing back against you, is the answer to that always gonna be a dissolution of that relationship because one person is not on board with the other, or is there another way to kind of meet in the middle with those kind of relationships? You know, I think I think as long if both people are willing mm -hmm. to work on it, mm -hmm. then you can absolutely you can absolutely unpack that and figure out how to do that where I'm going to take care of, still going to take care of myself. This is what I need to do to take care of myself, and this person can recognize this is not this is not about about me. I'm I she they're not trying to make me wrong. Okay. And and I think that's an important thing is this is not about trying to make this person wrong just because just because it doesn't fit with what you is okay with you doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just it's not acceptable for me. And so if both people are willing to work on that, then I think you can, you can unpack it and you can be okay. Um, I think it's, a, again, a really good idea to do that in therapy because there's lots of stuff going on there. Okay, hold hang on. on. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Wait, hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Hold we'll on. Get, we'll get you back. We'll get you. Uh, so just checking in because, so what if someone's asking you if you're okay? and you don't know if you're okay or not, and they're trying to get you to talk about it, and you just don't want to talk about it, maybe ever. Is that okay? Like that's, that's, setting, that's setting a boundary. That's exactly what that's doing. You know, one of the things that Bernie Brown talks about is not everyone is safe for you to tell your, your story to them. You need, you need to find people who are safe and deserve people who deserve to hear your story. Because if you are vulnerable with someone who's not safe, they're gonna they're gonna turn it around and they're gonna hurt you with it. So find people who are, are worthy, 
you deserve to hear your story. And if somebody doesn't deserve your story, you set a boundary and you say, you know what, I'm, you know, I got some, you can say, I just don't want to talk about it. Sometimes I'll say, you know what, I'm struggling right now that I'm, I really don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay, Sue. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Here you go. Okay, so what if you're dealing with the person? What if you're dealing with the person that doesn't know anything about boundaries, can't even spell the word? <laughs> so you're dealing with this person, and you're trying to do that. They don't, they don't have a clue. They just think you're mad, or that you're being hateful, or something, or something like that. You're being hate if you try to set a boundary, you're being hateful or you're mad because they don't know anything about boundaries. They can't even spell the word. They don't even know what it means. So what do you do with that person? Can you teach them boundaries? It it's not necessarily about trying to teach them anything. It's about you taking care of you. It regardless of what their what their their behavior, you're gonna do whatever you need to do, which maybe Separating yourself from that, getting yourself out of the situation, um, leaving the room. You know, this well, this is really you. this is really uncomfortable. I don't like it <laughs> when when we're having a conversation and when you get loud and angry, it feels really unsafe to me. It feels uncomfortable to me. I'm going to go take ten minutes and go to my room, or go for a walk. I'll be back in 10 minutes, and we'll see if we can continue this conversation calmly. If you come back in 10 minutes, and it's still not a calm conversation, I'm not willing to have this conversation with you. I, I did that a lot with, with my ex, is we'd be on the phone, and it would get really heated, and I would go, I, I am not gonna have a conversation with you when when you're angry and yelling at me. I, so I'm gonna hang up, and then I would just hang up. So I don't know if this is being manipulative. Don and I have a wonderful relationship, and we use metaphysical principles most of the time to deal with anything that comes on, which is basically go to your own corner, clean up your energy and, and everything. But I know for myself, when I see something that is happening, and then there's a pattern, and it continues. Um, you know, and I say to him, something's going on, I don't know what, and we need to talk about it. If he says there's nothing going wrong, I mean, that in its way is a boundary, there's not anything going wrong. But he's not normally irritable or or mad, and if he's been irritable and mad for a while, uh, something's going on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's one of those cases where all I can say to him is, I'm asking for, there's something wrong, and I'm gonna have to make a decision. And basically what you're saying is you want no input into my decision that I'm gonna make about this. And I said, you're probably not gonna like the decision, because I don't do, angry, mad, abusive for very long. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I don't know, where is the boundary in that? Who's crossing a boundary? If I don't say something to him, if I just say, no, nope, not doing this, I'm gone, that doesn't seem like it's uh, conducive to communication in a relationship. Because sometimes you can be, he's wonderful, but sometimes he doesn't have a clue what he's, what's going on with him when he gets in that state. He wants peace. Mm -hmm. And and I'm, I'm wondering in, in a case like this. Sometimes my halo gets crooked. Well, you know, and like one of the times, one of the things we found out, we talked about it. And we were going everywhere to every group together. And he, when we talked about it, it was kind of like he needed a place where he had his own voice. Mm -hmm. You know, and then he found a group that he could go to and be there, you know. And, and, and then he felt it was good again. But if we didn't, just kept going on and on. So I'm trying to figure out how that works in, in the boundaries. So 
you can pull yourself out of that situation at the moment. You can, you can, you know, we we had a oh, similar kind of a similar situation oh. just recently where I was just angry. I was I was angry. I was frustrated. Um, I was frustrated with me, and so it just came out as frustration, and it felt really crummy to sue to my wife. It felt poor, really awful to her because you know she's trying not working on her stuff, trying to make, not to take it personally, so she just backed away from it and just kind of stayed away from me, which was what I needed her to do, is, is I, I am going to just sit in it and go, okay, what is happening with me, and I don't want to say something that I don't mean, I don't want to say something mean, so just don't talk to me. So you were pausing. I was pausing. I was pausing, yes. But it felt really crummy to her, and what she tries to get me to do, which I'm not very good at and I'm working on, is say, you know what, I feel really crummy right now. I feel angry, I feel agitated, I'm frustrated, and I just need to pull back in until I figure out what's happening. But the next day, she came to me and she said, here's how this felt to me. And it felt really awful and I had no idea what was happening. And I was able to apologize and say, yes, you're right, I'm sorry, and and I will try and do it differently next time. Because I don't want, I don't want my actions for her to feel like something, you know, something's going on. And I needed to say, it was me who needed to say, okay, I feel really crummy right now. I need to remove myself. That would have been me setting a boundary of, I just need, I need some space. Yeah, Brenda. Yes, I, uh, whenever I come out of the transgender person, I had trouble with my immediate family. And my mother, in 2018, my mother had to go to a nursing home, and I have yet to have even talked to my 80-year-old sister since then. And I've been, recently I've been thinking, I'm 70 and she's 80, and we need to develop a relationship but her, her attitude towards me becoming a transgender person has put a roadblock in it, and I'm trying to figure out a way to undo the roadblock and get a relationship going again. But I just can't bring myself to want to confront that and I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I get that. I get that. You know, I talked to my first girlfriend uh, last week, and her she was 17 and I was 19 when we were together. And because she was younger and in a little bitty town, and my and her parents found out, found a way that I'd written to her, they found out, and it was all my fault that she turned gay, of course. Still, I so, was shocked to find out that it's still my fault that she's gay, you know, and that's, this was in 1980, 70, 79, 80, and it's still my fault that she's gay. And they still, they still lecture her every time they hear her, every time they see her, about being gay and how she's going to hell and how it's wrong and, and on and on and on. And so I, I get that, Brenda, it's hard when when who you are, your family, you can't have a relationship with, with your family because of who you are. Um, yeah. I think, is it Brenda? Is that? Yes. Yeah. She just spoke, yeah. Um, I think coming from the other side, hi. <laughs> I think coming from the other side of that, you're talking about building a relationship with your sister who currently rejects who you are right now. Um, coming from 
being raised very fundamentalist. I have a baby sister who came out as gay, and we were pastor's kids of a mega church in Kansas City, so that was a huge no-no, So, because we were simply the God. So uh, the entire family hit it and hit her for about five years, and that didn't change her sexuality. And for me, I remember yelling at her that she was an embarrassment, and I think for me that was my ironically enough, coming to Jesus moment because I saw the way I was speaking to my baby sister and I was telling her that she was unloved and unworthy and unwanted. And that started my journey toward a path of true enlightenment with Christ and true love of God and what love really means because it wasn't in my church and it wasn't in that religion. And so we're setting on 15 years later from that um, event but we have grown so, so close. I'm closer to her now than I am with almost anybody else in my family because of that moment. And so it may not happen tomorrow that you see how you just being you and existing in you and setting the strong boundary to say, I'm not going to apologize for who I am. You're the one that's going to have to change. There may be stuff working inside of her heart that you just are not completely aware of. And so sometimes it takes a long time for those people to come back and apologize for how they treated you because it takes such a long time for them to see that it's wrong. So don't give up hope yet on that relationship, I would say. There's always hope for that. Definitely not. Definitely not. It took a long time for my mom to come around, but she did. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, one of the, Brene Brown talked about one of the, the most shocking things that she found out and almost 500,000 pieces of, of data that and, and research for over a 20-year time period, one of the most shocking things that she discovered is that people who set the strongest boundaries are the most compassionate people. Mm-hmm. Really compassionate people are people who set strong boundaries. Mm. Does that surprise you? Does that seem surprising? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it lets people know what you're saying. Right. Yeah. It does. It lets people, it, Don says, it lets people know where you stand. Um, I also think that if you're willing, if you, if you take care of yourself, you have the resources to care for others. And so I think that, that that's one of the reasons why the people who can set boundaries are often the most compassionate because they have the resources to be able to be compassionate. Absolutely, because setting a boundary is taking care of yourself. It's yeah. self-care. It's self-care. She says that compassion without boundaries is not genuine. Mm. It's not genuine compassion. Because what happens when we, when we just continue to give and give and give and we don't set boundaries? What, what happens? We get resentful. It's we start if you start looking at your intention, what is my intention in doing this? And if my intention is um, because I want them to like me, because I because I'm afraid that you know they're 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 not gonna like me if I said that if I if I don't continue to do this. Then what we what happens is we start getting resentful of well they're just continuing to take and take and take mm-hmm. and I'm giving and giving and I'm not giving any kind of self care at all I'm not I'm not setting any boundaries for you know what I got I've got to have Friday I I can't I can't take care of, come and take care of you on Friday because I I have got to take care of myself that's compassion that's being not only compassionate toward other people, but also compassionate toward ourselves and having that self-care. Okay. Um, boundary, she says, boundaries are not a wall or a moat around your heart. They're not separation and they're not division. They're a path of self, to self-respect. Boundaries are saying that I choose self-love and self-respect over what you think of me or the possibility of hurting your feelings. Well, do we make up a lot of stuff, don't we? When, when 
it comes to <coughs> before we set a boundary. Well, I don't want to do this because we interpret how we think that they're going to feel, how we think that they're going to react. Um, and one of the things, one of the things that that I have tried to do is so. James, can I kind of role play with you a minute? Sure. A little bit. So, so if you set a boundary and you you are afraid <clears throat> that if you set a boundary, it's not going to be good because you think they're not going to like you. So, if that's your thought, then what? What if that's true? What if they don't like you? Then what? Well, if they if they don't love me, they probably didn't care for me enough for it to make a difference anyway. Okay. Okay. So if if they don't like you, then it's okay with you that that. Well, I, I think it just depends on the relationship. There may be a grieving process, or it's just it is what it is. You know, it's just what's happening. So we go through some of us we go through we go through this big rabbit hole. But if we stop and we think about it, is well they won't like me. Well what happens if they don't like you? Well, then they're not gonna they really are not gonna love me. And if they don't love me, they're gonna pull themselves out of my life. And if they pull themselves out of you out of your life Then you don't have to focus on setting that boundary. <laughs> <laughs> And some of us go to, then I'm not lovable. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm not okay. Okay, so I had a situation where a very, very, very dear friend of mine got mad at me and he disowned me. And I was like, okay. Five years later, the reason I have the name LP is because he created it for me five years later when he found out that what he had thought was wrong and he came back and apologized to me and we ended up having a relationship and when he would ask me a question about metaphysics or spirituality, he would call me Sister LP. What do you think about this? And so that's where my name came from. But it took five years. And, but that's what it took for him to come around. And sometimes that's the way it is. And during that time, he grew amazing. And so sometimes when you think that something is gone, it's really not. It's just, you just have to, have to flow with it and you just have to go on and do what you have to do. And, you know, sometimes it comes back to you and sometimes it doesn't. But when it does, it's worth it. Because sometimes when you are who you are, it frees that person to become who they are. Right. And they, you know, they're still, if, if there has been a good rapport, you know, they're going to think about, well, why, you know, what's different with that person? What, what is it? And sometimes that's what it takes to give somebody the freedom to change. Mm -hmm. And that and that comes that comes right back to the self care, to setting the boundaries. I'm going to do what I need to take care of me. You do what you need to do to take care of you. And if that means that that we are going to be apart, then that's what that means. You know. Um, but yeah, that's definitely part of the self care. So, okay. One more thing, Don. One more thing, Don. Uh, this might seem uh, immaterial or even tangential, but it, I spent a lot of time thinking about my boundaries outwardly, too. Uh, how far does my influence go? What is my outside uh, influence into the world? That's, uh, that's where all my, almost all my poetry goes is not the inner uh, boundaries that I have to set to, to get along with people around me, but where does my influence go out into the universe? Uh, 
So we're more complicated than, than what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Yes, we definitely are. So one thing, one thing I want you to consider doing is when you start having, you want to set a boundary, and you start having those that self-talk of what if they, what if this, what if that. Ask yourself this question: Is that true? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the answer is, I have no idea. If that's true, if it hasn't happened yet, you haven't set the boundary. You're just thinking about it, and you're concerned about what's going to happen. Ask yourself, is that true? And and for me, that's allowed that has allowed me to go ahead and continue to do something when I when I go, yeah, no, that's not true. Or I have no idea if that's true. So I can continue with this because I'm just making stuff up in my head. Okay. We I will, I will go around with the basket. Uh, if you are watching online and would like to support Unity of Springfield, you can go to www.unityofspringfield.org forward slash give or just click give on the front page. And Mary will read the announcements. Thank you, Mary. This was great. Thank you. And I'm going to, we're going to continue next week because I got like a page and a half. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for all of your input. That's the way I would love to take that class. I don't want it to be a lecture, I want it to be a conversation. So thank you guys so much for all of your input. All right, let's see oh, wait, the announcements. Um, everyone is invited back to the church this evening at 6 p.m. for Sunday evening meditation. Next Sunday at 9.15, the new Thought World Religion class. I will be continuing with part two on boundaries. Next Sunday is Easter, and we will be having an Easter egg hunt for the Unity family starting shortly after the service. Youth are expecting the, accepting donations of new plastic eggs and candy to put in the eggs. You can bring your donations by the church Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Today's the last day to or, order your Easter lily. We'll be having, uh, we do this each year and we display them on the platform during the Easter service. Cost is $15 and then you can take it home after the service. The order forms are on the table out of the foyer. John Brocker and the men's group uh, and potluck, <coughs> that's all it says. He, he's he's will, probably going to do will, that announcement. They will be meeting. Uh, Lisa's going to do a Planet Unity. <laughs> uh, Planet Unity's coming up. Listen for the announcement in church for that. We have a lot of uh, stuff on the table outside, too. Lots of stuff on the table yep. outside. For our March Earth Day Earth Care, we replaced all of our plates and bowls and cups with reusable dishes. To cover the cost, we're asking those who can to sponsor one or more place settings for $10 each. A huge thank you to those who've already donated. The dishes cost $400, and we've already collected $350, so we're only $50 short of our goal for that. Our Friendship Sunday potluck is on April the 7th. Please bring a dish to share and stay for the meal after the service. We would like everyone to sign up and ask and say what kind of dish that they're going to bring. All right. Okay. So we want to meet in the back. <laughs>